What's up guys, this is Dan. Just want to kind of do a uh, walk around detailed video of uh, my 90 Bronco 2, what is who is now called Sarge. Just got it officially finished for the most part. So I'm going to go over some stuff about it. I'm sure the first question is, no that's not a 90. Well, it is. <laughs> So uh, I bought this about uh, four and a half, five years ago now. I can't remember. 1990, two-tone, tan and brown, bone stock. I was lucky enough to have one that was produced uh, that had a factory Dana 35 in it. So that was cool. It had 373 gears, auto hubs, electronic uh, transfer case. 2.9 V6 and auto trance. So it's been through many changes since that. So my first uh, first thing I did was I put two inch uh, lift springs on it, coil springs, along with uh, two inch blocks in the rear. Went to 235, 75, 15 tires. And then that only lasted a couple months. I went up to uh, 31 by 10 and a half on 15s. And then I didn't have enough lift. I was rubbing. So then I did the uh, cutout fender flares. Um, and then went to, uh, I, had, I had it geared uh, to four tens. So that was cool for a minute, but of course the 31s then looked small with uh, the fender flares opening was a lot larger. Um, so then what did I do? Well, I, I got an 8.8 .8 out of a 99 Explorer, so I got an 8.8 .8 swap in the rear. Um, again, that had four tens in it, and it also got a uh, Detroit True Track rear diff. So from that point on, I decided to do a James Duff 5.5 inch lift, stage three, long arms, all the goodies, top of the line kit. And then I went to 33s and uh, had it re-geared with 488s. With the uh, suspension, I then did my first uh, Dana 35 front mod where you take 95 to 97 uh, knuckles off of a, uh, sorry, you take a pair of knuckles off a of 95 to 97 Ford Ranger 4x4 or the equivalent Mazda B series and those knuckles swap right on to the older Dana 35s and that benefits you by getting slightly larger rotors and uh, dual piston calipers with actual current design uh, slide pin uh, calipers. So that was a cool upgrade, big difference. Um, so that did that for a little while. And then I decided to go to a 35 inch tire. So worried about the Dana 35 hubs uh, which I skipped over. I did I did do the manual uh, worn lockouts quickly um, Let's see So then I did the next mod I took off those that knuckle swap I did and Then I did the full-size Bronco Dana 44 knuckle swap um, All this stuff I found online the Ranger Station Bronco Corral here and there uh, that worked out really well too. That way I gained larger stub outer axle shafts, um, the larger hubs, and full-size um, manual locking hubs, and obviously bigger bearings and a wider bearing spread, which felt a lot more comfortable with 35s. So at this point I got a 5.5 inch James Duff lift, TTB, 35 inch tires, 48 gears, and a uh, modified Dana 35 with Dana 44 outers. 
Love the truck, did amazing. The 48s really helped out with the uh, 2.9. I think I forgot to mention that the 2.9 or the, the, the truck only had 47,000 miles on it. So the trans and motor, everything was in great shape, full power. Um, the auto trans did give me one issue. I lost a, uh, one of the solenoids, uh, went bad on me. So when I changed out the overdrive solenoid, I did the other one as well. And then I did a uh, shift kit with the valve body, took that out. Added some stiffer springs, uh, did some valve work. I forget exactly what was all done, but I did all that myself. Pretty simple. Um, went off-road a few times, did great. Met a few buddies. Um, one in particular I'll mention probably a few times, Brian Racy. He also lives here in Michigan, about an hour from me. Um, so I'm rocking the truck as is for a little while. Does great, does great, but you know what? I gotta, I wanna do a V8 swap. So I found a V8 out of a 92 Mustang. I got the whole motor complete. Everything attached to the motor, complete wiring harnesses, the uh, computer every single part that you could could need so i got the motor and then next was well what trans and what transfer case did i want to run well i'm still fairly new to all this stuff i've never done anything with a motor or transmission as far as swapping or even removing one so uh, michael duff recommended i go with a uh, early bronco c4 and dana 20 which I was surprised I found pretty quickly within a month here in Michigan. So I picked that stuff up. So uh, let's see here. I picked all that stuff. I got the motor, the trans, transfer case. And then I started collecting all the swap parts and components from Duff. I got their motor mounts, uh, aluminum radiator. Um, I did do a two inch body lift from Duff with brand new body mounts as well, just to make sure I had plenty of room for the V8. I heard it could have been a little bit tight, so I went ahead and did that, no big deal. Um, so about it, you know, I was collecting parts, information, getting everything going about a year and a half. And then I, I met, met Brian Racy on one of the Facebook groups and turns out that he had just built an 86 Bronco 2 with the exact drivetrain that I was planning on doing to mine. So I quickly, you know, got a hold of him and we started talking and about the builds and stuff and found out he lived here in Michigan. And, uh, you know, we've been, we became uh, buddies pretty quick. Brian's a super cool guy. He's full of information. As long as you're willing to listen, he will explain everything to you, um, or to me he did. And then, uh, you know, we went wheeling a few times and this and that and had a great time. So I was like, you know what, I should probably go solid axle swap um, since I'm doing the V8 and all this other stuff. And that's because that's what Brian did to his. I was like, you know what, it kind of makes sense. It'd be perfect timing. So, and then also... I always liked the first gen Bronco 2s better. Back in high school, I had an 88 myself, and I loved it. It's been my favorite truck ever since. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a front end swap as well. So that's why my 90 does not look like a 90. I did a front first gen swap. So I'm going to try to include pictures of my truck, bone stock, and pictures with all my different stages I was in and uh, try to include as much information as I can. I've been meeting a lot of cool people online, all the different uh, Bronco 2 groups. A lot of people, you know, don't have the information or the knowledge. So I thought it'd be cool to share my experience and what I've done, what I've learned, and this and that. All right, so here's the motor. Like I guess it's a 92.50. I initially did have the whole Mustang front dress on this and it was tight. 
there was no space. My only option was to run a super low profile electric fan. I was having heating issues at low RPM. Uh, and obviously the Mustang power steering pump wasn't going to cut it. So I, I did two wheeling trips with that setup. And I said I'm not dealing with that anymore. So I quickly found some uh, V8 Explorers in the scrapyard. And I was able to get all the main, there's two main brackets that attach to the motor block. That's what you need. And then I also found out that that power steering reservoir, you can't buy that brand new anywhere. Has to come from a junkyard. Same as the water pump pulley. Cannot buy that one brand new anywhere. eBay, I checked everywhere for those two components. Nope. All the other pulleys and stuff you can buy, no problem. Uh, and the other thing was is chances are you're never going to be able to save the stock bolts from an Explorer V8 on the timing cover and all that. So on an early Bronco forum I found some guys had the different lengths and bolts that you needed and a website. So I actually was able to order some stainless steel ARP bolts in all the correct lengths because not a single bolt is the same length as anything from the Mustang or anything else. Explorer 5.0 is specific only to the Explorer and Mountaineer from what 96 to 01 I think it was So anyway So when I swapped in the Explorer stuff, which this was actually three weeks ago um, I did all brand new, I did brand new timing cover brand new bolts uh, brand new alternator Everything's brand new except for the brackets the fan Etc. Brand new power steering pump. So as far as the water pump's concerned, uh, there's a company called Flow Cooler. They make high-end water pumps, and they actually produce one for the 5.0 Explorer application. And it's pretty much proven that between zero and 3,000 RPMs, I think it was, that it will cool the motor 30% more efficiently than the stock water pump. So I thought that'd be a great upgrade since most of my stuff is uh, slow crawling through trails, hills, and all that stuff. So perfect fit worked out great. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So the motor itself, I went through it. Uh, I put a Trick Flow Stage One cam, and then some matching uh, valve st uh, valve springs for that cam. All new gaskets. Uh, the motor itself only had 87,000 miles on it, and inside the motor was clean, not a single issue. No sludge, nothing. So that was cool. And I also just recently uh, relocated the TFI modulator. Keep it away from heat, water, etc. Um, I'm running a BBK 65 millimeter throttle body. And a BBK mass airflow sensor, that's 76 mill, millimeters, I believe. The uh, kind of a cold air intake. I know it's not exactly cold air, but it works great. It's protected by the uh, AEM dry, dry flow sock that kind of goes over it. Uh, let's see what else is there. Uh, oh, yeah, I did a uh, steering shaft upgrade. It's actually uh, an article in uh, Four Wheeler Magazine. They did on a full size Bronco. And since the Bronco 2 steering box was actually the same as the 80s and 90 something, it shared the same steering box as the Bronco and F 150s. I don't remember the exact years. But uh, it's a kit, you buy it, it comes almost like, what, two feet long, and then you just cut it to length for your application. And that thing is just solid, no slop, perfect. Got rid of the rag joint stock uh, steering, which is just known for being sloppy and just nasty. So I did a solid axle swap. 
uh, I got an axle from a 77 early Bronco. I uh, had that, well I didn't have it, me, uh, my buddy Brian and I rebuilt it. Brian kind of showed me how to do a gear set and all that stuff. So I put the 48 gears in this and then also a Torque Master, um, like a lunchbox style locker. It's their heavier, dutier version of the Aussie. It's basically like, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll put a link in the description or something, but it's, it's an amazing locker for what I do. I don't need an air locker, electric locker. You know, this is a trail rig, off-road truck. So, and this thing's been performing amazing. So you can see uh, the James Duff three and a half inch early Bronco coils. And then the upper coil buckets remained on there from my TTB setup. Same exact um, upper coil buckets and dual shock mount, so that part stayed. And then you can see the, uh, the long arm radius arms for solid axle swap. Nothing beats a Duff suspension off-road, rock crawling, trails, anything. And then also I'm using Duff's uh, track bar bracket. It's an easy bolt-on setup. And I'm using uh, from Bronco Graveyard an adjustable track bar. But then James Duff sells a Heim joint. You can see it. A Heim joint uh, frame side end. A little bit better articulation. And then uh, I'm running a James Duff raised track bar mount. Bolts on the stock hole and then you weld it on the rest of the way. James Duff uh, lower heavy duty coil bucket retainers. And then I'm using a Rough Stuff Specialty. Uh, it's kind of like a universal kit. It's a Y-Link GM one ton steering setup. And it's also uh, over-knuckle design, so it gives me a lot more clearance for off-road. So in the back here is the 99 Explorer rear disc axle that's been on since I originally kind of started doing stuff to the truck. I think I mentioned in the first part of the video. But since then, I did a Iron Rock off-road truss kit. Added a lot of strength. Um, G2 cover, I liked it because it has a fill hole as well as a drain hole. And then I did uh, Yukon Gear uh, C-Clip Eliminator Chromoly Axle Set. Uh, so that way I, I don't have to worry about this rear end at all. Chromoly 31 Spline. Also gives you basically like the 4 9 inch bearing set up on the corners. So it's really, really sweet. I know I mentioned I had the five and a half inch uh, leaf springs from my from the James Duff kit I had originally. Now since I added the heavy rear back bumper and tire carrier, as well as that 37 inch spare, uh, this spring rate of that leaf spring just was not enough to hold that up. So I did recently last week took the uh, leaf springs out, tore them apart. And installed a full length Adelie from Superlift. And that got me sitting slightly high in the rear, increased spring rate, and it just worked out perfect. There was no math involved, I just thought I'd try it out. Ended up being perfect. Uh, so, speaking of the tire carrier and bumper, just had some scrap 2x2 two two square tubing laying around. Welded up a basic bumper, put in a receiver uh, hitch, and then uh, EMS Off-Road sells the whole spindle kit with all the little locking lockouts and stuff. I ended up putting one more latch on for safety just because how heavy the spare is. And I didn't really fully trust this style. I may actually just take this off because I really don't need it because this holds it perfect. So I forgot to mention on the uh, front axle here, I did the uh, 
heavy duty, best in the business, uh, Yukon, uh, hardcore lockouts. And then I'm also using um, heavy duty axle shafts currently with the strongest uh, spicer joints that were available. Uh, I'm gonna see how long all this stuff runs as far as the axles and new joints. Uh, in the future, I'll wait until something happens. If something does happen, then I'm gonna swap out to uh, RCV axles and not have to worry about it again. So, uh, tires, I'm running a 37, 13 and a half on 17s, uh, Nitto Mud Grapplers. Tires are amazing. Do not recommend them for a daily driver as they are super loud on the street. And you'll just end up wearing them down. But off-road, these things can't be beat. They're amazing. Um, and then I'm using uh, 17 by 9 inch, uh, just steel pro comp wheels. This way in case I get any damage or scrapes. You know, I didn't spend much money on wheels. Plus off-road, I don't know why anyone would have nice wheels. Uh, the spare is a matching size. It is a different tire. I didn't see a point in buying a brand new tire for the spare. I got this one used. It's barely used. I think I got it for $60 off a of guy, so really can't beat it. Uh, I just kind of... Uh, I tinted all my lenses. I just like the look. The black and the tan theme to me looks sweet. Got my Sarge decals made. Uh, I'm in a local club down in Toledo, Glass City Crawlers. I'm a new member as of this year. Great group of people. My 50 badge, uh, GPW302B2. What is that? Well, I kind of picked a military theme, kind of as far as paint. I kind of wanted to have military lettering, how they do on all those Jeeps and trucks and stuff. So my buddy Brian's like, you know what, back in the 50s or early 40s, I forget what it was, uh, Ford made or produced a, a Jeep for the war. And they were called GPWs. He's like, well, how cool would it be to just, you know, in your name thing you're making, call it a GPW and then 302 for the motor size and B2 for Bronco 2. I was like, oh, that sounds great. Ended up working great and uh, looks exactly how I was, what I was going for. And then uh, did the early Bronco 7 inch round headlights swap. Brian's got videos on that. I did a part two for his part one. Pretty simple actually, bolts right in just like stock, uses adjusters, a spring, and it just gives it a whole new look. And I just took my uh, Ford emblems from the grill and on the uh, lift gate, sanded them down. Since the grill is black, I painted them to match the paint, desert tan, and then I had a decal lady do the oval outline and script in black for that one and the back since the uh, emblems on the tan I did the reverse I painted it black and then had them do the uh, Ford lettering and oval in the desert tan to match it turned out perfect so inside excuse the carpet I don't have this part cleaned up yet but I did a twin stick on my Dana 20 so I can control rear axle, front axle independently, together, whatever. Uh, that's from JB Fabrication. Looked to be a very heavy duty built piece. Uh, stainless steel, won't rust. And it came with a nice dual boot. And then for my shifter for my C4, which I installed a reverse manual valve body, I'm using a Sidewinder. Uh, shifter here so it's kind of like a race style shift you can start off in first second third uh, for off-road I like it because you're mainly in first gear and four-wheel drive if you get kind of squirrely or something's going on you can quickly sh uh, get right up to neutral or reverse out of a situation 
So, and that I just I just like the style of the uh, this shifter anyway. Shifts great. I love the control. So far, so good. I wouldn't want any other way. Now the gauge cluster I kept pretty much stock. Um, the tachometer is a swap out from a V8 F150, I think a 92 or so. Swaps right in, perfect. And then I took this new uh, my stock needle off my V6 gauge, so it would match on this V8 gauge. And then I got a Speed Hut GPS driven um, speedometer. And I kind of did a custom little bezel, fit that right where the stock OEM speedometer was located. And then the rest of the gauges are stock. So it looks 98% uh, 90, OEM. You know, anyone else really wouldn't be able to tell without looking directly at it. But it turned out how I wanted it. Simple, easy, and works great. So I hope that kind of gives everyone a... Uh, an idea of what my build consists of. Uh, again, I'm going to try to go through and throw in pictures of all my different stages and steps, what the truck looked like initially, and how it's transformed. But this truck is a beast. Um, I don't know. It just it just turned out great. I can say I'm basically done with it. There's nothing else build-wise I need to do. Couple of future upgrades and mods um, down the road. I probably will do. There's a uh, there's a heavy duty output shaft for the transfer case that I will probably install next fall winter. Um, just because if I don't break it sooner, I just hear from a lot of the early Bronco guys that that is a weak point on these trucks when wheeling off-road so between that and then there's also a lower gear set for the transfer case that you can install so I might put those gears in too, get even a lower range um, let's see oh, I don't know if you can tell or not but the hood vents are functional they are cut out and then riveted onto the hood almost forgot that little part so again, uh, I don't really do videos. Uh, I've been trying to do some here and there. So I apologize if it seems a little jumpy or unorganized. But uh, you know, if you got any questions or comments, leave them. It's starting to rain here, so I'm gonna end the video here and wrap it up. All right, guys.